Welcome to the Tech Trends Podcast, where we discuss the latest manufacturing, technology, research, and news. Today's episode is sponsored by INTS Plus. Steve, we're traveling again today. Not today, I'm sorry. <laughs> Two days ago. <laughs> I was like, I, you just, I just got an anxiety attack. <laughs> You're leaving right after this. <laughs> Goodbye. Like, I'm not going anywhere right now. Play. We you were at a supply chain event, Pearl yeah. which is worked out really well. I'm glad we explored that uh, event. Uh, you got some observations on robots. Yes. Tell me more. Yes. So to, to um, add on to your your point about ProMat and being supply chain related show, um, last year I attended a supply chain show, Modex, mm-hmm. and this year you suggested that we try ProMat by the same organization. <laughs> and f- funny enough, we found out it's the same show, just ones at McCormick Place, which gives g- gave me a sensation of home field advantage. Mm-hmm. Made me feel really nice. I know McCormick really well. Yeah. Thanks, AMT. Thanks, <laughs> IMTS. Um, and uh, we went there to, you know, I expected more of the supply chain stuff, which is really fun in my eyes because as much as I love... IMTS, and we get to see the latest and greatest manufacturing technology there. At the supply chain shows like ProMat and and Modex, you see, okay, what is the technology that is getting product out the door? It's not necessarily related to the manufacturing workflow or the the manufacturing process of making parts Mm -hmm. and products and assemblies. It's, okay, the part has been made. The thing has been made. How do you get it packaged? Mm -hmm. How do you get it shipped? And how do you get that stuff done super fast? I'll add to that a little bit. I I agree with you. It's the kind of beginning and end of the manufacturing process. Yeah. I think um, to your point is is shipping stuff out the door, getting stuff into a pallet, wrapping that pallet up. But also don't forget it was uh, inventory and material handling in the beginning. So getting stuff in the door. And safeguarding. Can't can't sleep on safeguarding, but like there wasn't a single... CNC machine there. <laughs> well, and that's fine. There were a lot of robots, though. Robotic a lot arms. Of robots. A lot of automation, which is a lot very of, interesting. Oh, yeah. And and what Ben and I wanted, to, or were most ex- at least I was, I'm not going to speak for Ben, I was the most excited for the robots, um, specifically two great conversations that we had. Our first one with Yaskawa. Mm-hmm. Um, Yaskawa is just a company that I did haven't given enough t- attention to in the past. And when we were walking past their booth, um, I, I pointed to you or pointed out to you that I think that's a new collaborative robot because mm-hmm. I haven't, I hadn't seen that cobot before. It's been out for like a couple years now. <laughs> um, hadn't seen it before and I wanted to just learn more about it. And some of the yes, I also noticed pro mat, mm-hmm. like the, the people who are working the booths, are much more, I'm not going to say aggressive, they're much more um, active in like coming out to the hall yeah. to grab you and talk to you. And they were all great. Like yep. every booth that we went to, they they, they put their all-stars in those <laughs> booths. Not to say that they don't at IMTS, but like, um, like, like we were talking to two people mm-hmm. at uh, Yeskawa, one who had been there for a long time, knew all of their products, and the other one specifically knew about this new pendant that they have um, and uh, their their collaborative robot. And it was really nice for me because I was like, oh, man, I actually know this thing or two about robots. And, and going through all the things, all the features on the pendant yeah. was really cool. I was like, dude. I could program this right now. (laughs) Like, I could use this robot right now. There would be no learning curve. And I I think that's the biggest takeaway in looking at both the robotic companies that we saw there is the interfaces and controllers and pendants. It's come a long way. It's come so far. Because as gassed up as I am, and I think I'm a roboticist, like, really anybody could have gone up and (laughs) known what they were doing. Like, there's, like, straight up buttons on the end of the arm. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a teach button. You hold that, you you grab the end of the arm, you hold that teach button, and then you can move the arm wherever you want. Yeah. It, like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't go limp, but it just, like, it becomes conforming to whatever you do. Yeah. and we saw that on at least two robots. Mm-hmm. That That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yes, Gawa was great. They, they. I'm surprised. Like they are an established name sure. in robotics. Like they are up there. They're mm-hmm. one of the big robot manufacturers. Um, they have some really affordable offerings. Like they're not insanely out of reach. Um, 
they're not the cheapest, <laughs> but like they're they're competitively priced. Um, and to be fair, I think that's the overall market trend that we've been keeping an eye on. We have been specifically for Clab robots. Not, I don't think we've investigated too much on the industrial side, but right. the overall shift in uh, pricing um, has shift has come down quite a bit. Yeah. But another thing that I really appreciated about Yaskawa, the, the takeaways that I got from the two people we spoke to, Yaskawa's robots are very much built to last. Like, mm-hmm. they're not built to have, like, all of the features. They're meant to be durable, reliable. They can put up with abuse, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was very cool because, like, you know, being a car and motorcycle guy <laughs> and, and, and talking with Ben, fellow gearheads, um, uh, that like you know a, a big selling point to a lot of cars uh, and, and and just fun hobbies is how much abuse can it take? <laughs> sure. like, like can I, I don't want to, but can I neglect it? Mm-hmm. Can you do that with a Ferrari? Absolutely not. Can you neglect a Toyota? Oh my God, it will ask for more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and and it's cool to know that. Okay, so. Yes, Gao is like on the to- trying to be on like the the Toyota level on mm-hmm. that. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, the other cool thing I got from Yaskawa was, and I noticed I've noticed this for years, but I never really put it together until this person said it was Yaskawa doesn't just sell the robots, but they sell the entire cell, uh, mm-hmm. the entire system that you need, the solution that you need. They will source everything for mm-hmm. you and everything will be painted blue unless you specify <laughs> otherwise. Um, and that's really cool because I, uh, <laughs> in other hobbies, mm-hmm. I also prefer when, like if the main thing, let's say a firearm, mm-hmm. if it's a firearm that you have, you would ideally, at least for me, ideally I would like the main brand or manufacturer that made the firearm. I want the other stuff around it with exception like optics and stuff. I'd like most of the other stuff to be made by that same brand. Then sure. you'll know everything works together. And as you a, know? as a strategy, I mean, it's uh, similar in terms of how you want to approach integration. Um, yeah. Some other companies prefer to uh, use their partners. Um, but to your point, right. um, they... And they do have they, partners to work agreed. with if they don't yep. offer the thing. Yep. There's a different, different, interesting approach on how they see uh, integration of their equipment. Yeah. So, and I think they can provide more of a promise and more of a a guarantee of durability because everything is from like a certified ecosystem. Everything's within an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. You know. I was going to talk about. Oh, go ahead. You got one more. We thing. got one more robot to come in and talk yeah. about. I'm sorry, I didn't like. Uh, uh, never mind. Um, we got to see. I got to actually talk to people at Schneider Electric. Mm-hmm. Another, they're they're a bit of a newcomer to the robot game. Um, I think I shared something last year uh, in the in the tech report about Schneider Electric, and there were two things of note from that article that I shared last year. Um, Schneider Electric. The two cool things that Schneider Electric does with their robots. Number one they publish accuracy figures. Mm -hmm. In the past, nobody else has done that. There's only one other brand that does that. It's the 800 kilogram, uh, 800 pound gorilla (laughs) in the room, Fanuc. Mm. For the longest time, Fanuc was the only robot company that had A, the results, and B, like the cojones to actually publish their accuracy figures, which is really cool. Like, that's awesome that, like, they sell a robot and they can guarantee that it will make those, that it will be within that accuracy of performance. Mm -hmm. Um, And Schneider was, to my knowledge, the second company to do that. Mm -hmm. And they're a newcomer and they're a collaborative robot company, which is, like, it's one thing to get an accuracy figures out of industrial robots, but accuracy figures out of a collaborative robot, that's sick. Second thing that is really cool about Schneider is pricing transparency. You don't have to play a game of, oh, we'll talk to this sales, oh, which which region are you in? We gotta talk to our sales okay, people. Okay, okay. No, you go to their website, you'll see the prices. Mm. You will see pricing transparency 
you're welcome. Like, <laughs> like, like it's millennials that are making this happen because we don't want to. We don't. We're antisocial. We don't want to talk to salespeople. Yeah, it's a good like point. like just show us the price and then we'll know if we can talk to you. Yeah. Because if the price is too big, we can't talk to you. Those boomers, they're all like, if you have to ask, you don't have enough. There's like that's why we don't like talking to you. You raised us. <laughs> um, so that, that is actually pretty useful, for, particularly on their collaborative robot line, because you can self integrate. I mean, you could do the rest of sudden. As yourself, right? Um, and we talked about uh, their controllers yes, and stuff like that. Their PLC controller yep. is the bee's knees. I thought the robot was cool. It's their PLC controller. I've never, Ramia, been excited about a controller. <laughs> Controllers, boring. Snooze fest. Not Schneider's. So Schneider Electric, they started, they, they are, were originally a French, uh, I think they're French. They said French. Somebody over there said French. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> French. Circuit breaker company. Okay. They do circuit breakers. Right. That's what that was their bread and butter for the longest time. They have since got into robots. Um, but going from circuit breakers to robots, naturally, their real product, the real star of their show, is gonna be their PLC. Mm -hmm. And they advertised, they told us that their um, PLC controller can handle one controller, one PLC controller can handle 300-something different joints. Yeah. And a robot typically has, like, three to six joints, three to seven joints mm -hmm. on it. That means that this one controller, you can control not just, like, tens of these robots, but you can control those robots all on one controller, any gantry system and tracking system that you have for those robots, which is adding another joint and adding another degree of motion, um, and whatever your heart desires, all on one controller, and all of those devices that you have will interact in, with each other and, and move in one co as one cohesive unit, which is like, this is the perfect foundational controller for robotics. Yeah, that was a really interesting takeaway when they, they have not paid me. They were describing <laughs> their not, yeah. controller, and it's not number of robots. To your point, yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is the total number of joints. So if you look at it that from that perspective, it kind of opens up how you control joints, axes, degrees of freedom, whichever term you want to yeah, use. How you control like the whole cell. So it was a very fascinating look on, you know, both how the humans interact with these robots, but also the capability of the PLC. And again, affordable. I love. Oh. I just recently learned what a PLC means five seconds ago because I Googled it. <laughs> Congratulations, Rubia. Yeah. We're all learning stuff here. Primary logic. Programmable. Logic, logic controller. controller. Yeah, man. It's We're nice. there. Rubia? Yes. You want to tell us about today's sponsor? Yes, I can. Manufacturing digital content to get you ready for IMTS and after. We are hosting videos and articles on topics relevant to manufacturing technologies and the business of manufacturing. And it's all free. I guarantee you'll find something you like. <laughs> Go to imtsplus.com. That last sentence was me putting that in. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> imts.com. I also realized that I didn't say IMTS Plus at the beginning. So our sponsor is IMTS Plus. Thank you. Thanks, Ramia. I found an article on AI in the business place. So Axios published a survey results um, from executives and um, the employees about how employees and C-suite executives view select areas of AI adoption in their company, at their company. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting perspective of <clears throat> where the leadership is uh, kind of pushing the organization. Everyone's interested in implementing AI. AI. Um, but they have a couple of questions, and the biggest difference in the survey results is the difference in views from the employees versus the uh, leadership or the executive staff. So like the first question they talk about is, uh, feel the company's approach to AI is well controlled and highly strategic. So at the executive level, they say 73% of the executives agree with that. Mm. But at the employee level, only 47% of the staff feel yeah. along mm. the same lines. Um, think their company has been successful in adopting AI over the past 12 months. Only 45% of the employees feel they've had success. Jesus, yeah. But 75% of the executives this is funny. Um, <laughs> this is, say the company has an AI strategy. Almost 90% of executives feel they have a strategy. Only 57% of the employees feel like uh, they have a strategy. Is this um, an article about AI, or is this an article about how out of touch C-suite level executives no, are from actually telling. getting work done? I think it's very telling. Um, 
Because I think there is spicy. There is a, a big gap. What I've noticed in the say past couple of years of the execution of certain projects yeah. and aligned to where the uh, kind of leadership is headed. Uh, the pa- the reason I bring up past couple of years is related to like digital strategies mm. and implementation of digital strategies as manufacturing moves more digital. Um, getting the IT and OT teams aligned on terms of I got to put a widget somewhere as opposed to, you know, the executives or C-suite saying, this is our plan and calling it done before we actually get value out of that. So yeah. that's, that's a great point. I would actually, you know what would make this survey better? Not just like um, going between the C-suite executives and the like the regular staff. Mm-hmm. If they did C-suite versus IT, mm-hmm. that'd be <laughs> drastically different. Yeah, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Like I just, I'm just laughing at this last one. Say their company has an AI strategy. Is there an AI plan at <laughs> all? Exactly. Exactly. 90 percent. May as well round up even further. Hundred percent of C-suite <laughs> executives say there is. The rest of the staff, less than 60. Yep. And that's wild. A, that's a big disconnect is um, we've like technology adoption still, especially if something's fast paced as AI, mm-hmm. getting a strategy of what are we going to do with this organization related? It's, it's, it's not making it down to the people who have to do work. Yeah. 30% is a wild deficit. Wild disconnect, excuse me. And so they have uh, in the article they have a section on uh, you know the big picture and driving news, um, and the the chart kind of hits on some of the stuff that's driving news. But there's a stunning stat section, and it says fifty fifty nine percent of the executives say they're actively looking for a new job with a company that's more innovative with generative AI, and among employees, the number is thirty five percent. That is crazy. That's pretty wild. That's a pretty big difference, also. It is. For people to say that they've like, you're already saying that your AI is doing well, and then mm-hmm. you're like, I want to go somewhere with more AI, and everyone right. else is like, No, no, we're no. fine. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no. at things. Keep that's, that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. That took me a while to pro. Not only are they overhyping it, they're trying to leave. Yeah, yeah. And, and do more of it. <laughs> like, please to mo- do more lying. <laughs> <laughs> This is astonishing. I'm broken. I, I, you know, I was not prepared for this. Is it? Is it too early to hit you? It's very yeah. fitting, honestly. Yeah, this is too triggering. Yeah, and to be fair, I don't know how to bridge that gap in the disparity between, you know, the perception of uh, AI in the organization versus actually providing value and the tactics of it. So, I don't know, man. It's it's pretty alarming. Um, so, thought oh, that was a good article, though. That's really it is good. really good. Yeah. yeah. But we do have some good news. Steve, you want to tell me about... I do have good news. Let's end on a good news now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, so I've been seeing articles, a few articles, all saying the same thing. But mm-hmm. I finally got the, uh, one article saying the same thing from a source that I ha- hold in a higher regard. From Reuters, U.S. manufacturing output accelerated in February. Nice. Good. I'm not the principal economist Economist. There yeah. we go. There I we go. cannot say that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I am not the principal economist at uh, AMT. Shout Chris, Chris Chidzik Chidzik. is. And if you want more econ- economic information, go see his content. He's got some great content. But Check out the USMTO on AMT. That's right. Shout out USMTO. Um, but with, with all of this AI disconnect, manufacturing is on the up and up. At least it was in February. Let's hope we're continuing that. And that's good news. Yeah. And it, it's a similar trend we've seen. Uh, so our automation committee kind of discusses where they think the market's headed mm-hmm. based on their bookings and things like that. And they definitely see a potential upswing for this year because end of last year, they saw a lot of interest, but not a lot of people pur- uh, signing purchase orders. But they kept pushing it out to this year, and we see a lot of pent-up uh, potential on um, yeah. on that. So I think there's a lot of potential for this year. Um, so we'll definitely see more. Um, yeah. There's a winter uh, economic, uh, some economic um, yeah, webinars yeah, yeah. going on, and then we have empty forecast later on this year. So it'll be an uh, interesting look. Yeah, I'm excited. Ramiya, where can they find more info about us? It changed. techtrends.amtonline.org. Like, share, subscribe. Bing bong. Bye, everyone. Yo. Bye.